This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the best way to make an amazing website. Hey guys, it's Max. In front of me, I have the brand new Razorbook, Razor's first non-gaming laptop, and we're gonna compare it to the brand new M1 powered MacBook Pro. Now, both these have very similar specs, and I'll go ahead and link both down in the video description. In this video, we're not only gonna compare the design, the performance, fan noise, and heat, but we're also gonna test the speakers, webcam and microphones, photo editing, and one test that we haven't done in any of our M1 comparisons that you won't wanna miss. Prices are also similar, but we're gonna talk about that at the end and a few key differences. Now, let's go ahead and close these up and let's first talk about the design. The MacBook Pro has its iconic standard design that hasn't changed for a long time. It's slim, it's lightweight, and the Razer, it also looks kind of like a copycat of Apple, but it is super premium. It feels solid. The edges are also curved, but they're a little bit more squared off. We have aluminum all around. It feels fantastic. And along with that, we have a couple vents here at the bottom. You guys might be able to see some fans through that. Whereas the MacBook Pro has no vents on the bottom, so you're not gonna be able to block it if it's on your lap. But with these vents, we should get some good airflow into the machine. And I'm excited to see how the 11 gen processor performs in this chassis. The inside is also very solid. There's very little flex on the deck. And overall, this is the best built Windows laptop that I've ever tested. They improved the speaker grills here. It feels fantastic. I just have one complaint. The MacBook opens up easily with one hand and the Razer, the cutout is just way too small and you have to use two hands to open it. As far as battery and chargers, I have to say finally we have a nice slim charging brick. Thank you, Razer. This one's 65 watts compared to Apple's. 61. As you guys could see, it's a little bit longer, but it's quite a bit smaller. Um, now with that, I do have to say I like the little design where you have this little plug. You don't have to use the cable like you do with razors, but both of them are USB type C and this one is really nicely made. Now, as far as the batteries, the Razer laptop's slightly smaller and has a slightly smaller battery at 55 watt hours compared to 58, but we're gonna talk about real world battery life at the end of this video. As far as ports, the Mac just has two they're all on the left hand side USB 4 and Thunderbolt capable and then we have a headphone jack thankfully at least for now and the Razer absolutely smokes it on the left hand side we have a Thunderbolt 4 port standard USB headphone jack and on the other side we have another Thunderbolt 4 HDMI 2.0 and a micro SD card slot. Another thing I love about the Razer is that we have Windows Hello. So as soon as you open it, bam, right there, it logs you in. The Mac does have an always on mode, instantly on, you don't have to wait but you do have to use Touch ID, it's not as convenient. Let's get into keyboard and trackpads. The MacBook has Apple's Magic Keyboard. It feels fantastic. Reliability has also been really good. As far as the Razer Book, the keys also feel really nice. They used to have really bad keyboards, but this is a really big upgrade. I'm also really surprised by how bright the RGB backlighting is on the Razer. It's almost blindingly bright, but you need that with the white keycaps, whereas with the Mac, I have a Mac style. You can't really tell, but at night, it's definitely there. If I had to choose which keyboard is better, I would choose the Mac, but most people will be very happy with either one of these. The MacBook also has the touch bar above the keyboard with your shortcuts. You can customize it. Let me know what you think about the touch bar down in the comments section below. And now let's move down a little bit to the trackpads. The Razer Book has a really nice large trackpad, but the Max is bigger. The Mac also feels a little better. It's not a true diving board design. It's magnetic. You can customize it. It's the best on the market. With that said, I've been playing with the Razors. It also works really well. And even though it is a diving board design, they have done a fantastic job. Their trackpads used to be garbage. Now this one is definitely usable. I gotta say, the Razer Book is starting to shape up to be my favorite Windows laptop as long as it gets the speakers correct and the webcam which we will test in just a bit but first let me give a shout out to the sponsor of this video Squarespace if you've been thinking about making your own website Squarespace is seriously the best way to go we've built multiple websites and you can too with literally no web making experience you just choose a template customize blocks of text and images and easily move them around it's incredibly simple it's affordable and ours have been running for years now bringing in new clients thanks to its 
built-in SEO tools. So whether you need a website for a small business or for literally anything else, go to squarespace.com slash maxtech or use the custom link down below to get a free trial with no credit card needed. And when you're ready to launch, use our coupon code to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Let me quickly cover the displays. Both are about 13.3, 13.4 inches and thankfully, this Razer now has a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which is so much better for a 13 inch laptop. Now, as far as resolution, the MacBook has 4.1 million pixels compared to 2.3 million pixels. So about 80% more pixels. And yes, you can tell when you're looking at fine text that it is sharper, it is more detailed. Now I do have to mention that you can get a 4K display with the Razer, it just costs quite a bit more and it also affects battery life, which we'll talk about at the end of this video and that the Razer's displays are actually touchscreen, which is convenient for some tasks. Now we also have a difference in color accuracy. The MacBook can display DCI P3 colors where the Razer cannot. So if you're serious about color grading, photo editing, the MacBook is better. Comparing the brightness, as you can tell with that top camera, both are very, very similar at about 500 nits. And that is fantastic because the Razers used to be about 300. They'd be quite dim and hard to see when you're outside. And as far as viewing angles, the Razer is actually better as you can see with our side angle. As far as contrast, the MacBook is once again better, but interestingly, as far as reflectivity, the Razer is slightly better. And it makes me think, is this display the same exact one that's in the brand new XPS? Because it acts and looks exactly like it other than the DCI-P3 support. So finally, Razer also fixed the reflectivity. That is awesome. Both of these laptops have 720p webcams, but it's interesting that the Razer looks to have four microphones above its screen. So I'm interested to see how the mic is gonna perform. Let's take a listen. This is the microphone and webcam quality in a fairly well lit room from the M1 MacBook Pro. This is the microphone and webcam quality of the Razer Book in a fairly well lit room. And now it's time to compare the speakers. Both these laptops have some grills on the sides of the keyboards, but the Razer has this THX label on here. It has some credibility. In the past, the Razer laptops sucked when it came to sound, so hopefully it's a lot better. Put on a pair of headphones and let's take a listen. Go ahead and let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And I just have to say, I was sitting here shaking my head. Why does this have a THX logo on it? I don't know because I haven't heard sound this bad and this quiet since the last time I reviewed a Razer laptop. It is unfortunate. My iPhone 12 mini sounds about the same volume, but it actually has more bass than this laptop. That is such a shame. And now let's get into performance. I'm gonna start out by testing the SSDs. Now our MacBook Pro has a 512 gig SSD compared to 256 on the Razer, but that is how they're configuring this spec. So let's go ahead and run our speed test here. Wow, all right, very nice job, Razer. The write speed is about the same. The read speed is actually faster on the Razer, even though it has a smaller SSD. Now with that, you can actually swap out the SSD because it is an M.2, whereas with the MacBook Pro, it is soldered in. So you need to buy however much you're gonna need for the future right away. Next, we are gonna be doing a web browser test and so many of us spend a lot of time on the web. I have Chrome opened on both of these to make it fair. Let's go ahead and get started here. We have our scores and the MacBook Pro is about 30% faster, snappier, quicker when it comes to general web browsing. But with that said, this is the highest I've ever seen any Windows laptop or any Intel based laptop. That is an excellent score, definitely not a slouch. And now let's go ahead and test out the processors. We have Intel's best 11th gen compared to Apple's M1 chip, both 16 gigs of RAM. Let's go ahead and get started. All right guys, we have our results and this is actually impressive. We have 1534 for the Razer. That's actually better than the Dell. That's the best we've ever seen on an Intel Mac. But the MacBook with the M1 is still about 15% faster in a single core. Now, of course, the multi-core score, we have an even bigger difference. The MacBook here is 40% 
faster. Now, with that said, that is with both of the laptops plugged in. If we go ahead and unplug both of these, the Razer actually will go into a balanced power mode, not only in the window settings, but also in Razer's software under the performance mode, you no longer have the full performance, ultimate performance mode only, battery saver or default, and you cannot change that. So I'm running this test one more time to see what kind of performance do you get if you are unable to plug in or you just don't want to. Wow, okay, this is a first. The Razer actually got a higher score when it was unplugged with multi-core. You guys see you're about 260 points higher. All the other Windows laptops with 10 gen, 11 gen processors, they scored a lot lower, but not this one. The MacBook actually got slightly higher score in multi-core as well. Of course, and the MacBook Pro is also more powerful. Now, what I am very interested in, do we get a similar result, at least similar performance when you're really pushing the system in photo, video editing, and Cinebench? Because Geekbench, it only tests out some very simple tasks, even with multi-core. We're gonna check that out here in just a bit. And now let's go ahead and compare the graphics. This Razer book has Intel's best XE graphics, the highest end version of it. And of course, the MacBook has Apple's M1 graphics, the eight core version. I'm gonna go ahead and run uh, Geekbench 5's compute test here. It's finished and it looks like the M1 MacBook Pro is about 15, 16% faster. Now we are using metal. If I was to use OpenCL, it'd be a little bit slower, but still faster than the Razer. But of course, all the Mac apps are using metal now. So I have to say that this is fairly close. And this is actually the highest score that I've seen on a Windows 13 inch Ultrabook. And now I'm going to unplug both of these. And I'm curious, will the Razer perform the same as it did when it was plugged in, just like with a CPU test? We have our results and oh my goodness. Once again, we have the same score. Actually, is this slightly higher than the last one? Let me take a look. Actually slightly higher on battery power. Man, this is, other than speakers, the best Windows laptop as far as Ultrabooks. It maintains its performance even though it's in balance mode. That is so, so refreshing to see. Of course, the MacBook is still a little bit more powerful, but let's go ahead and shut this down here and let's do a more serious gaming test, more real world with GFX Bench. I'm running the 1440p Aztec Ruins high tier off screen test. So resolution won't make any difference between these machines. The Mac started up much faster then the Razer. All right, and wow, I was not expecting this. The MacBook scored 79.5 frames per second. That's a really good score for an Ultrabook like this, but the Razer, we got 48.1 frames per second. So even though we only had a 15 to 16% difference in the Geekbench 5 graphics test, here, the MacBook is 65% higher in terms of frames per second. So as far, as far as optimized gaming goes, the MacBook is far ahead. Now, of course, this is one test as a benchmark, and with Windows, you have access to a bunch of games. You don't have to do any workarounds, crossover. You don't have to wait. All the games are ready. But as far as the performance, it still gets smoked. Uh, by the Mac. And as far as gaming performance on battery power, I ran it again. The Razer is actually identical, 48.1, it didn't change. The MacBook actually got higher by about one FPS, which is interesting, but it is great to see that. And now we're gonna step into more performance and we'll see, does this actually correlate when you're running both the CPU and the GPU? First, I wanna really push these systems with Cinebench R20, which is gonna max out the CPUs. We're also gonna do some thermal testing and I'm gonna open up my hardware monitor here now I wanna see what wattage you hit. Okay, 40, 45, 46, 48, 49 watts. It's, it keeps going up here. That is the limit. And as far as frequency, running at just basically four gigahertz. Wow, 50 watts. So we're definitely drawing a lot of power, but the temps, 95, 96 degrees Celsius, 97, 98. Are we gonna hit 100, 99? 100 on one of the cores. Fans just kicked up really hard. Our Mac is at 78 degrees Celsius. The fan is still off. And it looks like the Razer is now thermal throttling. We're running at 3.6 gigahertz now. 
so it is slowing down because of heat. Whereas our MacBook, it runs at a consistent 13 watts and there's no thermal throttling. It runs at 3.2 gigahertz when you're giving it a full load. Let's take a look with our thermal camera. It looks like our MacBook's running at 32 degrees Celsius at its hottest point and the Razer is at 39 degrees Celsius. There's a lot more hot spots overall, but we also have a couple of cool spots and that's where the fans are sucking in cool air. Two and a half minutes in and our Mac is now running at 96 degrees Celsius, 94 and the fans kicked up, but only at 2700 RPM, it's still completely silent. And with that, those are the performance cores that run hot and Apple is okay with them running hot as long as the system is silent. The, uh, the power efficiency cores are running really cool and that's about as hot as they get over there. We're five minutes in and I have to say I am impressed with this Razer for two reasons. After it cools down, it kicks the wattage back up. Now we're at 36 watts from 25 and the frequencies go up as well. Whereas most other Windows laptops with these same processors, they just slowly go down to 20 watts. We're almost done. Let's take one more glance with the thermal camera. We have 39 degrees all concentrated there right in the center of the keyboard. And we have 43, 44 on the Razer. All right, we are finished. And the MacBook gets a score of 76, 74. And our Razer blade, let's close this. 5444. Honestly, I thought it was gonna be higher because of how high those frequencies stayed and the wattage kept going up. So that is very interesting. I guess that's still about 13% better than the Dell XPS, so that's a good improvement. But the M1 Mac is 40% faster in full CPU load, which is a pretty substantial difference. Now, I still wanna go ahead and unplug these, and I'm just gonna run one single test, so it's not gonna completely factor in thermal throttling, uh, but we'll see what kind of difference we get on battery. Wow, it's still boosting to 50 watts on battery power. Let me kick up the brightness here so you guys can see that. So on battery, it's still allowing it access to the full power, 51 watts, um, that it can get but then it quickly does drop down. There you go, 19 watts. So it doesn't stay there very long. And our frequency, instead of four gigahertz, now we're at 2.7 or so. Of course, the Mac, it runs completely the same regardless. We have our scores and interesting. So it looks like the multi-core score is actually higher than before. Now I'm sure if this was a long test, it would be a little bit lower, but really not by much. With the Dell XPS, it went from 4,800 down to 4,200 with just a single run on battery power. We're here, we actually went a little bit higher. So that is excellent. And with that, I wanna say that the fans are not that loud. They're definitely quieter than the Dells as well. So as far as thermals, it is pretty good, really good for a Windows laptop. And now let's get into photo editing. I have Lightroom Classic opened up here. Of course, this is an x86 app, perfect for this Intel Razer book. And with the M1, Rosetta has to translate it so it's not running at full performance. And we have 50, 42 megapixel raw images open up here with a bunch of effects. I'm gonna click the develop tab on both. And wow, the Razer was almost instant there. Let's go back to library. Bam, the Razer is quicker again. On the XPS, they're about the same. And now, let's go ahead and scroll through these images. These 42 megapixel images, they are tough on system. So let's click next. Okay. The Mac is actually faster. That was quite a bit faster there. That was about the same. Mac is faster. Very interesting. As you guys see, we have a lot of changes here. Let's go ahead and do a quick zoom test. And do you hear that? The Razer's fans, although it was quiet in the past, it's running and it's off on the M1. So let's go ahead and click. We'll zoom into the center over here. Same performance on both. And now let's go into our brushes here. All right. Nice and smooth. No lag at all. Let's try out our M1 Mac. Little bit of lag right there at the start, if you guys saw that. Yep, tiny bit of lag at the start. 
and then it smooths out perfectly smooth. So the razor is a little bit better as far as brushes dealing with these images. And now let's go ahead and export 50 of these images. I have my timer ready. Hit start and let's go. The fans are kicking in on the razor. Let's check our hardware monitor. Yep, 98 degrees, 97, 100 degrees. And not much later, the razor finishes. So as far as overall performance, when we're exporting these images, they're fairly close. We have two minutes and 35 seconds for the Mac and two minutes and 55 seconds for the razor. So about 20 seconds faster on the Mac. Of course, this application is not yet optimized. I assume once they optimize it, we're gonna get faster speeds. And then as far as brushes, it's gonna be perfectly smooth. So now let's do one more test with photo editing. And this is gonna be building one-to-one -one previews. All right, very, very interesting. I feel like I said interesting so many times in this video. So when we exported the images, there was only about a 20 second difference, but creating one-to-one -one previews, the MacBook took two minutes and 21 seconds compared to three minutes and 33 seconds. So instead of just a small difference, the gap there is much bigger. So the MacBook is about, I don't know, 35, 40% faster in that scenario. Very interesting. I went ahead and opened up a 4K project in Premiere Pro. Now my previous videos, I tested Final Cut, which is super well optimized for M1, and DaVinci Resolve, where they've started to do optimizations, but it's still nowhere near as good as Final Cut, at least for now. And Premiere is actually not optimized for the M1 at all whatsoever. It's optimized for x86 systems like the Razer Book. So I thought it'd be interesting just because Premiere Pro is the most popular video editing platform. Let's go ahead and hit play with this project here. And this is full 4K on both. I have two LUTs applied. I have some film grain. And it looks like, ah, oh, they're very similar. I might actually have a little bit more glitchiness over here. This is perfectly smooth. The razor's starting to kick up its fans. I went ahead and enabled dog ears here. And that just shows us all this info. And yep, I was right. I could trust my eyes. We're playing back at 20, 19, 20 frames per second instead of 30. So basically we're dropping about a third of the frames and I could tell it's stuttery. Now let's take a look at the Mac. We're at about 30, 29. All right, so almost perfect playback at full 4K resolution. And this is pretty much what most YouTubers are editing and the codecs they're using and typical effects. So it looks like the Mac, it's playing back perfectly smooth. I can't tell any issues at full quality and completely silent without heating up. The razor's heating up and it's dropping about a third of the frames. Very interesting. So let's go ahead and export this five minute project. I'm using Adobe Media Encoder and right off the bat, the Mac started exporting fairly quickly. We're still waiting on this to initiate. There we go, it's running. Now let's just wait for these to finish. All right guys, we are done. And I once again wasn't expecting this. Um, the razor took 12 minutes and 32 seconds compared to nine minutes and 55 seconds. So the razor took about two and a half minutes longer to finish this test. I thought that the MacBook Pro would get smoked. We're running Premiere Pro, which is not optimized at all with that. If we were running DaVinci Resolve, um, this MacBook actually in our last test took five minutes and two seconds, the same exact identical project. So basically twice as fast if we were running DaVinci Resolve. And with the Dell XPS that has the same exact components, that took 12 minutes and 50 seconds. So actually slightly slower than Premiere. Looks like it's about the same time. And if you're running Final Cut, the same project takes three minutes and four seconds to do. So here's a little graph for you guys. Wow, so let me go ahead and unplug you. I'll run that again. Well, judging off of the estimated time, and Premiere is fairly accurate here, uh, it's gonna take exactly the same time. We have 12 minutes remaining. It's been 34 seconds here. So it looks like if you're unplugged, you still get the same performance, which is fantastic for a Windows laptop. All right, guys, so what is my final verdict? Well, first off, I did not expect <laughs> the Razer to perform so well. This is their first productivity laptop, and not only does it look great, it's sleek, uh, the screen is very nice, it's bright, it's not very reflective. Yes, the color accuracy isn't as good as the Mac, but with that, it just impressed me so much more than I expected. 
The fan noise is lower than Dell's. I like the design better. You can swap out the SSD in here. It doesn't lose much performance at all when you're on battery power, it is faster. This is just a really, really sweet machine. Now with that, the Mac is actually cheaper which is crazy. This is about $100 cheaper if you spec it out. It has a higher resolution screen. Brightness is similar. You have better color accuracy. The speakers smoke the Razer. It is faster, even in programs like Lightroom and Premiere Pro, which are not optimized. And that is just very, very impressive. And of course, if you use optimized applications, it's even better. And then it is pretty much silent, even under full load when the fans are spinning. It's super quiet. Most of the time the fans stay off. And then battery life is something we didn't talk about. Uh, with this system here, with the Razer, the 1080p option, you could expect about six to maybe eight hours with real world usage, mixed usage. Whereas the MacBook Pro, you're looking above 15 hours for real world mixed usage. So the battery life is absolutely incredible on the Mac. So if you know that you want a Windows laptop, if as long as you don't need great speakers, I would highly, highly recommend this Razer. I'm gonna be using it more, testing it out, and then we're gonna do a full review on it. And if you don't care about operating systems, you don't need Windows, the Mac is a, such a sweet deal for the performance you're getting and everything else. Let me know your thoughts uh, down in the comment section. I have links to both down below. Click that circle above to subscribe and check out one of those other great videos right over there. And I will see you guys in the next video.